for this part here. And so now it's going to throw our backdrop into what we have currently. And these lines are just safe lines uh, that you'll see the boxes that are on the screen. Just in case uh, you're using this on a TV, you want to keep your titles inside of those lines for that purpose. So, okay, we got our text tool, uh, type tool selected here. And so we're just going to click. And we can say, my silly pictures. Okay. Now we can use our selection tool. We can move that where we want. We have in here some different ones we can choose from. Okay. Let's try this one. Or this one. I like the way this one looks. And this is a little bit big. So I'm going to come into the uh, font size. I'm just going to scale that down by scrubbing, putting the mouse over it and dragging it, or you can just type a number in. Okay, and put that there. And I'd like to rotate it a little bit. So again, I'm just going to scrub that, maybe put it like that. So that's it in here. Let me just close that. Now I'd like to have somewhere to put that title over a black area. When we, when we start here, uh, we're automatically starting right into our um, first picture. But I'd like it to fade from black in and put our title on there. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a new item, and this is going to be black video. Again, same settings as our sequence. Just create that. And now our black video, I would like to put it into the beginning here. So there's a couple of ways to doing that. I'm just going to select everything here. Let's do that again. Select everything on our pictures. I'm just going to slide them to the right. And uh, it's important to notice which tool we have selected. Now in here I have this set up so that the toolbar is on the right hand side of the screen here. Uh, in yours it may be on the top. So wherever you see these tools. But this is why I've been working with the selection tool. That's all we really need in here for this tutorial. Then I'm going to put our black video down here and we can see that uh, I believe this is set to five seconds Now, one way to do to change it if I want is I can just right click and choose speed and duration so maybe I want to change this to three seconds instead of five and then I'll just drag everything back here I'm going to reduce this so we can see everything by hitting the backslash key okay and we'll drag the oops Make sure that we don't have our wrong tool selected. And we'll drag that back. And so we spoke of the transitions earlier. So I'm just going to go into the video transitions. You see dissolve. And you see how under the, the video transitions, this cross dissolve is got a little red box around it. So that shows you what is the current um, default one. To change to a different one, you can just right click and say set as default. So we're just going to leave that there. And on my timeline here, I'm just going to hit my plus key and zoom in a little. And I'm going to drag and drop this transition right onto there so that when it runs, it fades into it a little bit. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take my title. And I'm going to throw that on there. And so let's have the title so fade with it. So here we go. So that gives us a little intro into our into our video. I'm going to hit backslash here again on the keyboard to zoom out. And now you see that we've got things that are a little bit too long here. So we got a couple of ways of handling that. I think in this case I'm just going to take the last picture out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some more black video. So we can just drag our black video down again. And this time we can have it just by dragging it, it should snap right to the end of our selection here. And I'm going to drag our cross dissolve up on this again. Oh, well, by the way, I'm just going to zoom in here a little. The plus on my keyboard. If you select a, a uh, dissolve and you go up into the effects control, you can actually, uh, by dragging it or doing all kinds of other things, and here you have uh, options. See so if we drag it this way. Um, you can totally change how that dissolve will work. 
but we won't get into details on that right now. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so backslash again. And now we're just going to add one more title, new item, and title, and this is just our goodbye. In the interest of time, I'm just going to skip showing the creation of this title. I'm going to drag our goodbye into video two and on top of there. And also, I think I'm going to drag this out so it matches it. I'm going to have the black video and the credit go a little bit past uh, the end of the of the audio, so that the uh, the video ends in silence. Okay. Now, just as a uh, something fun that we can do here, I'm going to go into the effects control, and what I'm going to do. Well, first of all, I'm going to zoom this out so we can see the whole thing. And in our motion here, we can set some uh, animation on these credits here. So I'm just going to take that, and I want it to start at the bottom here. And I'm just going to drag this over so that it's at the beginning of the clip. And we're going to set a uh, keyframe to toggle the animation on the position. Now, if you don't know how to do this, then... Oh, this is going to be for another tutorial. But if you do know how to do this, it's something simple you can do just to add a little animation in. And so the next thing we do is we're going to take it near the end of the clip here. And I'm going to add another keyframe. And on this keyframe, I'm going to tell it that the video for our credits is going to be all the way up to the center. So we'll just estimate it there. It's fine for now. And one fine th final thing to do on this is that I'd like to interpret this so that it eases in. So that way when it comes up, it slows down and goes to the center of the screen. Okay, let's fit this back. And let's just take a look at that. So there we go. The next section we want to do is we want to take care of... Uh, sending this video out so that we want to upload this to YouTube in this case and so what we're going to do is uh, we can go up on our file menu or we can go export and we can click media okay, we'll go export media and that will bring up our export dialog box and so we have many presets in here so one of the presets uh, YouTube uses an H.264 for its default um, encoding at this time so that would be a good one to choose and we could choose any other one or whatever but this is what we want to work best with YouTube and we can scrub our timeline over here just to get a better idea of where we're at and now we want to choose what format so you see we have YouTube standard definition right here 800 by 600 is going to be closer to a standard definition it's not a widescreen if you're doing widescreen we could choose some of the other ones so standard definition, but we have set for 800 by 600, and what we see here is that it's uh, 640 by 480. Now I'm going to try and change this, but it's going to mess up on me, so I want to point this out. I'm going to link these together so they change at once. So if I said, uh, well, we'll choose the top one because it should be 800, and it's going to error on me. So this is an invalid frame size for this level. Please lower the frame dimensions frame rate or increase the profile level and try again. So you see that that's an issue, it's not working for us. So what you do is you come down to the level here and you increase it here. So let's try it at uh, 3.2. So in this case if I said 800 and it only goes to 798 so we're going to increase it again this time to 4. Now it will do it no problem but our aspect ratio has gone off so what I'm going to do is check off the link together and type them in manually 800 sorry 800 by 600 and our frame rate also got increased when we changed the level so we want to make sure that that's set to what our sequence is which is 29.97 uh, the field order is fine aspect ratio 43 is fine profile everything is fine here uh, from what I can see so that is just fantastic. Now our audio is the other thing that we want to check. 
the codec that we're going to use, depending on our audio quality, it may or may not change. So a lot of audio recorded today on computers is at 48 kilohertz. So we're going to change it to that. Now, if you know yours to be different, then you can change it to uh, what you know it to be. Um, if you're not sure, uh, leave it at the. You can change it to 48 or leave it at the 44.1. It really won't matter all that much. And the audio quality is on high, and the bit rate. Now, this is going to matter depending on the level the audio is at. So if you're doing music and stuff like that, I mean, you might want to up this all the way to 160, even beyond 192, 224 if it's high quality music. If it's just your voice, if you're just talking, 64 would probably work just fine. Um, but I'm going to increase it to 80 for this example. Well, we have music, so I'm going to actually increase it a little more. Let's put it at 128 for this one. So there you have some options for that. Now you can save this as a preset so that the next time you come in here, you are not going to have to uh, set all this again if you're doing a similar type project. So we're going to save as an, a preset. Okay, so it's going to be YouTube standard definition, and I'm going to just say 800x600. Okay, and the save filter settings and FTP settings don't need to be on, so we'll just leave those off. Okay, there we go. So now, the next time you see up at top here, it sets up a custom pre-file or a, a custom uh, option here in the presets. So we just have to choose that the next time around. Now it's a good idea to check your output. I just click from the source tab to the output, and the reason you do that sometimes you might have black bars around the windows. And just to give you an example, we'll change this to a different profile. Let's say widescreen. And now you'll notice that in widescreen, the video is widescreen, but our pictures are not. So what Premiere is doing is putting black borders around it for us so that the, the video will be exported with black borders around it. So in that case, you have some options. You can go back to your source and you can crop the video if you need to. So you can choose uh, a 16.9 because that's what that is. And then we could say, well, I want my pictures all to be cropped here. So this will crop every picture across the entire um, video that you've created. Now if you look at your output, though, it doesn't have any black borders around it anymore. So we're just going to undo that. I'm going to turn off cropping. And I'm going to go to our custom preset. And that's going to set us right back to where we were, 800 by 600. Our audio is on the 48 kilohertz with 128, so everything is remembered by the preset. So the other thing you might want to do is maybe or maybe not change the output name. So this is going to determine where it's being saved, so you can browse on your computer. So I did a previous one here just to test. And you can change the name here, so we're just going to leave this to my video pictures in this case. And now the final thing that we're going to do is we have two options. We can either export this, in which case uh, the video will instantly export and be encoded into our video for YouTube, done by Adobe Premiere Pro. The other option is, is we have a quince. So I'm going to click the quince just to bring that up. Now that opens up uh, Adobe Media Encoder. So if you wanted to do some other work on your computer or go back into Adobe and do some other work, uh, you could do that while the encoder is running. When you export with Adobe Premiere Pro, it kind of takes over your whole computer because it uh, the level that it uses to export that way pretty much takes up all the resources of the computer. If you use the media encoder, however, it's a little more relaxed and allows you to do a few little things on the computer while it's encoding in the background, so to speak. So pick your, uh, your choice here. Now, if you're using uh, an older version of Adobe Premiere, the media encoder before version 5.5 did look a little bit different. Uh, it all works the same, but instead of the buttons being up here on the top and stuff like that, uh, they would be down in the bottom. So other than that, once it's loaded in, there's really nothing to change. We've made our changes already. So we'll just hit Start Quince. So here we have the end of it. It's been encoded. So let's just play a little bit of it. 